Morning, Keith. Hi, Susan. How are you? Pretty good. I was thinking, oh, see, I was going to interrupt you again. Go ahead. But when we talked about doing this announcement for the, the reopening of church and what that would look mm. like, I thought, wow, Keith and I are going to do this video together. And it's kind of funny because we're talking about how we're going to social distance and how we're going to wear masks. Um, but all of us have people around, in and around our families, that we have deemed part of our cohort, part right. of our family that we're comfortable spending time with. And I work at the office here some. Um, and then we live and, in the same neighborhood and our families have said we are yeah. kind of, yeah. So we're not wearing a mask in this video. We're more than six feet. We're less than six feet apart, but that's yes. also because we have in this, these eight weeks, our families have, have considered that we've already blended that. And so mm -hmm. we'll acknowledge that, that as we talk about the governor's opening up Indiana plan and personal protective equipment, all that kind of stuff in our church. Right. So he laid out a five phase open up Indiana plan this week. Right. And, and one, one of it was churches could just bam, open. I don't know why we were like the rest of society has to be very careful and cautious, but bam, churches can just do whatever <laughs> so, they want. <laughs> because of that many of us in the church are wondering what's going to happen with the gatherings at Riverside. Right. right. And so are and, we going to right. bam? <laughs> so as elders, we've discussed, we've prayed about what the best course of action would be for Riverside in the coming weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've developed our own multi-phase opening up plan. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. It's pretty exciting. Now this plan is based on a few different things. One, the governor's direction, his plan and his people's plan, but also the direction of our local government and our local health department um, and their input, as well as we want to make sure that people in our, in our church body who are more vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, that we have special care and special um, things in place for them in this season before we do any kind of opening up. Because even though um, churches have been given this exemption that we can basically meet if we want to meet, it didn't seem the wisest right. as we prayed about it. So we're going to lay out now our, our, our three-phase plan on how we see Riverside going in terms of, of opening up, in terms of gathering together in the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. And so phase one. Oh, my, this is my turn. Okay, so starting next week, we are going to work to reopen home groups. So, and some of that'll be, there'll be some home groups that will want to continue on Zoom. There'll be some home groups that are going to try meeting outside. Our home group is going to try meeting next outside week, yes. next Thursday. Um, and some home groups, there's some really large spaces here at the Beacon that they're going to use. Um, we're encouraging groups to skip shared meals and just gather together, social distance, mask, unless you're outside. Uh, basically follow the guidelines that we've been asked to follow. Um, and some groups will choose not to meet in person in these coming weeks, and that is completely fine. We're going to have each group will do things mm -hmm. a little different, and we want to learn together um, what the best practices have been and, and how we can, as a church, do this well. Which means also that we're going to continue worshiping virtually on Sunday mornings and continuing our Zoom prayer mm -hmm. times. Now, I thought it was interesting. You had explained to me the other day that Sam Rund, um, who works at Notre Dame, Explained a little bit be behind why we should be wearing the masks. The yes. masks are a pain. The they're, masks are not. That's they're what, sweaty. Yes, they're, they're not fun. But they're important because, and this is what, well, he, what he said, which I think was extremely important for us to understand. A mask doesn't protect you from other people as much as it protects other people from you. Mm. What that means is when I'm wearing a mask, it keeps my stuff from going out into there. It doesn't do a great job keeping their stuff from coming in. But what that means is when there's a person working at a checkout line or a person gathering near you at a home group or even in a church gathering space, um, the mask keeps your stuff from going out onto them. It's really a way of showing love for the others, a love for the other people versus the whole I'll do me, you do you culture doesn't work when we're trying to love our neighbors. The right. mask is a way to love your neighbor. And it's not, it's not really a First it's Amendment not, issue. No. In, in my mind, it's Jesus tells me to love my neighbor so and love so, your neighbor. Yeah. So if I go into Meyer without my mask, I'm just like saying, you don't matter much to me. Right. So um, so when home groups gather, we're going to have masks available as a church for people who don't have masks. And I heard that somebody's sewing masks for us. We have people us. in our church who are sewing masks together. That's, That's, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, phase one is the start of home groups starting to open up a meeting in person. Not right away. Not all of them. But just, you know, it slowly <laughs> will happen. What does that mean phase two would be? So the governor has said that dependent on how things are going through the right. month of May and the beginning of June, that on June 14th, people could start to gather in groups of 250. 
So assuming that that date holds and that there aren't secondary outbreaks and things like that, um, at some point after June 14th, because we want to see how are things going, are right. there new guidelines from the government? At some point after that date, we'll begin to gather or work to gather on Sunday morning some. So we are not gathering on June 14th, sometime after June 14th, based on what we see going on in locally and in our state, that's when we will start gathering after some time in that date. But some people are still going to not feel comfortable Absolutely. gathering, and we just want to provide uh, spaces in all directions for people, for varying levels of comfort, right. varying levels of health, immune systems. Um, so what's Sunday morning going to look like? You... So, so when sometime after June 14th, when we open up the beacon and start meeting together in the flesh, we've had that available, we will still have the video virtual gathering available. This will be the, the, the music, the same teaching content that would happen on a Sunday morning will be available in a video format. So if you're not comfortable coming to gather at the beacon on Sunday morning, you will not miss out in terms of the content, at least, that we would be having made available. And probably when people are gathering at the Beacon in those first few Sundays, we'll probably be watching that video content on the screen so that we as a staff and elders can figure out how to do the greeting and, and the social distancing and all the other stuff that goes along with yeah. gathering a larger group together. And so if you're not comfortable when in the future when we gather and we do that, if you're not comfortable, you will not miss out in terms of the content that will still be available mm. online. So it also seems like you haven't talked about kids, but we aren't going to be having a kids program for a while. Right. I, it would be pretty hard to have a, a five-year-old keep six feet distance unless they're wearing a mask in a kids' ministry room. So It's pretty hard to have the 15-year-olds <laughs> keep social distance. I don't know about your 15-year-olds. Um, no but comment. I've, they're probably watching this video. I've been around some teens in our neighborhood <laughs> and um, at a little... Uh, David had some people out to camp to help spread mulch. Um, it's, just it's just really hard. hard. It's, hard. it's just hard. But when we gather, we will still be following those social guidelines of masks and hand sanitizers being available and, and those best practices yeah. as well. Which then means that phase three, which is sometime in the future, yeah. we would then um, reestablish kids' ministry programming when we gather. Um, so even when phase two, when we start having the availability of gathering at the Beacon on Sunday morning, there would not be a kids' ministry, then that would happen in the future, right? Or nursery? Nothing? Nothing. I, I, may, we'll be flexible. We're going to reserve the right to be flexible, but in theory, phase three will be in the future when we have mm -hmm. full kids' ministry program again. So I'm glad we're leaving the video option there because families may decide, like, it's just hard to yes. go out. You put on a mask and sometimes it scares your kids. Yes. So they may want to stay home. And we want that to be a, a, a viable option for our entire church, absolutely. Um, that seems like a lot of words and a lot of waiting. Yeah, I was thinking like, blah, 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 blah. A lot of words and a lot of waiting. But it, I think it just acknowledges this has been a hard time. Mm -hmm. There's not a clear clear answer either. This is, it's, it's hard to discern. Um, it's Certainly, it's wise to do things in phases and see how it goes as things unfold, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it has been encouraging even in, I don't know if you felt this way, but I felt very encouraged just different stories I've heard being part of the Zoom prayer, hearing what's mm -hmm. going on, that there's been a lot of growing going on and a lot of care and nurturing inside our body, yes. um, not even from the elders towards people, but just home groups loving each other well, people meeting needs, do it, checking on people. It's been so yes. such a good time in that respect. It has made me as a pastor just my heart's so warm to be part of our church, watching people love each other in this season. It's been mm -hmm. awesome. Well, if you have any questions or, or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact me or Benji or any of other leaders in this church. Um, our greatest concern is that we care for you well, that we shepherd mm -hmm. you well. And so your thoughts are valuable to us. So please don't, don't hesitate to reach out, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. So with that said, um, we love you and we'll see you should later. Should we wave goodbye like everybody waves on Zoom? We should. Bye. <laughs>